Hello again, everybody. This is I am Cogs, here with another EU4 achievement guide. Today we'll be covering Don't Be Seely, an achievement guide for version 1.30.4, the Austria patch. If you're unfamiliar with Don't Be Seely, you simply have to start as the nation of Seely and form another nation. There's nothing too standard deviation when it comes to your opening moves. You want to make sure you're doing the normal things. Transferring trade to your home node in Venice, setting your estate privileges, and then finally finding yourself some partners that ally you up. You can start with a royal marriage with Austria from the get-go, which should springboard you into an alliance with them. I also like getting a royal marriage with Hungary that kind of dissuades them from attacking you. Be sure to see some land from your estate so you get over 30% crown land. And then you can set your privileges from there. If you're using this guide just to finish the achievement, I would suggest using the privileges I selected. However, if you're going for a longer run, I would suggest using whatever privileges you're comfortable with. I generally do counselors for each uh, estate, clergy, nobility, and burgers, just to get a reduction on cost when it comes to your advisors. And then I also like to do supremacy over the crown, which is going to give you 10% uh, loyalty in each of the burgers and clergy, making it easier to hit that 50% threshold to where you can safely revoke some land from these estates. And then finally, one of my favorite uh, privileges is control over monetary policy. I love the yearly inflation reduction and the flat production efficiency something I generally go with every run I have when I'd have a chance to. Make sure you build to your force limit as you do have a mission to do so. Uh, the extra 5% morale is going to help you when it comes to uh, your future wars. So building two infantry is going to help you here. You'll also notice me selecting my ruler as a general. This is really up to you and your personal preference. I do prefer having the heir take the throne as soon as possible since he does have better base stats than the ruler that you start with. And it gives you a free general so you don't have to spend your monarch points for a general. Set your preferred play speed and do one last check making sure you didn't miss anything to set before you start the game. Your starting strategy is simple. No sea being Herzegovina and force vassalizing them. You'll be using their land to launch attacks into Bosnia and Serbia to expand your power to be able to foster stronger alliances with the likes of Poland, Bohemia, and others. Don't be afraid to hit the save button at this point. Herzegovina likes to pick up alliances from time to time with Ragusa or even Bosnia. So if you need to do a soft reset by save scumming, I'm all for it. When you're ready, unpause the game and get ready to attack Herzegovina. When you're ready, feel free to declare war on Herzegovina. As you can see, I have the free company hired for my mercenaries. This is going to provide you extra manpower when it comes to actually taking on Herzegovina. Providing both numerical superiority over Herzegovina and the ability to siege their provinces without using manpower to do so. Once the war is won, go ahead and vassalize them and take whatever ducats you can from them. Congratulations, you now have a point of attack when it comes to attacking into Bosnia and Serbia. Spend the next few years focusing on improving relations with Herzegovina to get them loyal and then improving your stability. Depending on who your vassal has claims on, feel free to declare war on either Bosnia or Serbia. Bosnia is the weaker target, while Serbia has the larger army and the fort to actually siege down. You are strong enough to take on both of them at the same time, which you see in this situation. Your best bet is to focus on one of the two, make sure that you completely destroy any army they have, and then fully siege them down. And then focus on the next target. That's exactly what we did here. We focused on Bosnia, made sure they had no armies left, and then fully sieged their provinces. Then we could focus on Serbia.
when you're given the chance to do so, fully annex Bosnia. I like to split the country in half, giving two provinces to my vassal and two provinces to myself. When it came time to peace out Serbia, we focused on just taking two provinces. Gathering too much aggressive expansion here is a death wish for a small nation like yourself. And you'll get a chance to finish them off in your next war with them. Wait for your truce to expire and declare war at the first opportunity you get when it comes to Serbia. In this scenario, it looks like they picked up an alliance with Hungary. However, it looks like Hungary is busy dealing with their own issues and they won't accept a call to defense here from Serbia. You can see from the get-go you outnumber them 3 to 1, so it's just a matter of sieging down those provinces and taking the rest of their land. By now it's worth noting you should be fairly big enough to grab some larger alliances. As you can see I do have alliances with Poland and Bohemia, and they will come in handy when it comes to actually breaking apart Hungary in order for you to grab Croatian land that they have a personal union over. Once the war is over, make sure you partition the land the way you want it. I personally like giving the land bordering the Ottomans to my vassal, thus creating a buffer state between me and the Ottomans. From there, your next step is to core all your land, and then finally, integrate your vassal. This process will allow you to gain favors with those allies, allowing you to call them in when you declare war on Hungary. Make sure you turn the land that you just integrated into states and then, and then finish any missions that you accomplish by the integration. The final step to this achievement requires a little bit of patience on your end. One of two things can happen here. Either you get enough favors with Poland to call them in, or Bohemia is willing to accept a call to arms. However, we do have 10 favors with Poland, and with their personal union with Lithuania, they are more than enough to handle Hungary for us. So keep this in mind when you're looking for an opening. The biggest tip I can give for this war is being diligent when it comes to sieging down Croatian land. You don't want an AI to siege it down and then end up losing the chance to actually take that land from Hungary. Oh, and also, make sure your morale is up before you declare war on someone. Don't want to stack wipe yourself here. When it comes to piecing out Hungary, you'll want to make sure to take all the land that Croatia owns. 
it's 100% worth noting that this will create a coalition against you. However, there are a few things that do mitigate this coalition. First and foremost is when you actually sue for peace. As you can see, it's December 27th, 1500. That means in four days, yearly calculations will tick and aggressive expansion will go down. So a lot of those nations that were initially angry with what you were taking will no longer be coalition eligible. Second, the strength of your alliances with Austria, Bohemia, and Poland should keep any sane country from ever declaring on you. At this point, it's a good idea to have a good amount of admin and diplo points stocked up. You'll need the admin points to core the land that you just took, and then you will need the diplo points to do some culture switching. Our goal here is to recreate the freshly conquered Croatia. In order to switch your culture, the culture you want to switch to has to have 50% of the development in your country. Make sure you promote Croatian culture to an accepted culture, and the best thing you can do to help your culture shift is release Serbia. Once Serbia is your vassal, that should put you over the 50% threshold to be able to shift cultures to Croatian. With a full annex of Croatia, the six provinces you take from them will be enough to form Croatia once you core them. Finally, take the national decision, and voila, you are now Croatia. This is an achievement that I accomplished in the past, therefore I don't get the pop-up for it, but you 100% will once you become Croatia, and thus ending our Don't Be Silly achievement run. If there are any achievements you'd like to see in the future, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below. You can also drop any questions, comments, or concerns down there as well. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash imcogs. We'll see you all next time for our next achievement guide.